Hello and welcome back to McLaren Performance. Arteta can't make his mind up between two keepers. And Onana isn't having the best start at Manchester United either. There's a lot of weird things going on and it makes me question what even is a keeper anymore. If you're anything like me, you probably thought that, you know, over the past few years, you had a pretty good understanding of what a goalkeeper is and what a goalkeeper does and what the judgment really is on what makes a good goalkeeper because really my impression of what a good goalkeeper is is someone who makes saves who stops shots who helps teams to keep clean sheets and while that is probably still the case in some ways it seems to be that over the past few years there's been a real shift as to what a goalkeeper should be especially for those top teams either in the premier league or in the champions league because again with my naivety I thought Aaron Ramsdale was a pretty good goalkeeper and, and by all accounts he probably really is if you look at the statistics of it and if you look you know the eye test of last season he's been a fantastic addition to Arsenal played really well been a really good character as well a good leader in many ways by the looks of it uh, and really contributed a lot to that team not quite win the league uh, but getting that second place and getting Champions League football as well. But really by the standards of your Manchester Cities, your, your top European teams really, it seems to be the case that Aaron Ramsdale isn't really, not quite yet up to that standard. And the defining factor it seems to be to make a keeper go up that extra level isn't really necessarily their ability to make saves, to keep clean sheets, although of course that's a necessary thing to have. It seems to be a big thing now a keeper has to be very good at distributing the ball. And with that in mind, then enters David Rea coming in on a loan from Brentford. A keeper who is arguably better at stopping shots than Aaron Ramsdale, but can also, in addition to that, distribute the ball to a variation of distances and do it with a lot of accuracy also. And that's led to a really interesting dilemma at Arsenal. And it seems like a situation, really, that a lot of people are losing their minds over. The idea that a keeper that is better than another keeper, will take that keeper's position in the starting eleven. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> Apparently, up until this point, the goalkeeper position is just completely different to every other position on the pitch. And yes, in many ways, that kind of really is the case. It's almost like a different job, both technically, tactically, physically, definitely psychologically as well. There's very different aspects to that game specifically, than there is to being an outfield player. And maybe it's become a habit of the game because of that, but the goalkeeper position uh, has really been treated differently. And the big difference mainly, it seems to be, uh, the idea that you don't change your keeper. It takes something massive to change your goalkeeper, for that goalkeeper to make a big mistake, and to do that consistently also for then there to be a change in that position. Apparently, according to a lot of pundits and a lot of coaches, and pretty much everyone really in the game, uh, and understandably coming from keepers also, a keeper needs to feel comfortable in that position, to feel like they are number one, that a manager is going to rely on them consistently, and to have that relationship means that that player is then going to perform consistently. It's not like an outfield position, apparently, where if that player is not performing well, even in the middle of a game, you would then change that position, you change that player, or for any tactical reason, you might change an outfield player to get some sort of tactical advantage. I find the argument really interesting. Is it such a sacred position that it shouldn't be changed so often? Or is that just a habit uh, that we as coaches and footballers and everybody in the game has just kind of got used to and, and really accepted that role? Because what Mikel Arteta is doing is something that's really interesting and something he's talked about going to the start of the season is that he is going to be more ruthless. And I guess... That ruthlessness also extends to every position on the pitch, including the goalkeeper position as well, because ultimately, and it seems to really be the case, regardless of what Arteta seems to say, outside of things, he wants David Rea to be his number one. <laughs> I mean, that looks pretty evident, really. He's played the past few games uh, statistically in a number of different ways. He is a better keeper. It is a marginal gain that Arteta wants to have in his team and he's been ruthless in making that decision that even though Aaron Ramsdale has done nothing wrong he's still going to be replaced by a better keeper and you can't really argue with Arteta's reasoning on that if they want to win the league if they want to become one of the best if not the best in Europe then they have to make these ruthless decisions and it leaves an interesting situation because there's no real clear distinct number one in that team Aaron Ramsdale, David Raya, Raya however you pronounce it I'm going to say either one 
Uh, they're pretty similar in terms of the qualities. It seems to be the case that David Rea has that slight edge to him. But it's rarely the case that two high-quality keepers are, are battling it out nearly every week. And it seems to be Arteta's message as well that he's going to make the choice dependent on the week, dependent on the opposition, dependent on how they've performed in training. Very different to what is the tradition of having that starting keeper and that keeper knowing I'm definitely going to be starting. And that kind of change is really interesting. But what is also interesting as well, what I talked about before, is what Raya brings as well, is that ability to distribute the ball. What I talked about in the last episode with Ange and Spurs as well. And the tactics of football anyway, you're trying to create an overload going forward and try and create more players going forward, more chances going forward without sacrificing too much at the back. And essentially, how the goalkeeper role is developing is pretty much that. A keeper that can play the ball forward, create attacking opportunities, uh, be good with their feet, be able to push forward somewhat as well without really sacrificing too much in terms of conceding goals. David Rye did a fantastic job of that last season, not going on to the not going into the details of the analytics and the statistics of that. He did probably the best job of everyone in the Premier League at that job, creating attacking opportunities and also stopping shots and keeping clean sheets. So naturally He's made this progression to Arsenal. With that, also found his way in the number one spot. I also don't think distribution just means being able to kick the ball very long up the pitch and find the player. While, yes, it does include that, I think it just also includes that ability to, to have that awareness, really, of how to go forward. For a keeper to have that ability to play with their feet, either short passes, distributing left to right or right to left very quickly, or being able to find that pass going forward. To have an understanding, really, of where those spaces are and where they open up, how they open up, uh, and be able to play a ball forward. These days, every position, you have to be able to play in the position that you are in, but also be very, very good at playing in the position in front of you also. If you are a keeper, you have to be very good at being almost a centre-half in the build-up, or even a, a number six, possibly. A defender has to have that ability to push forward, and be almost a holding midfielder or going forward as well. And a midfielder has to have that ability to create that overload in the final third as well, to create yeah, an overload of players. And being an attacking, striking player, on top of also doing possible defensive responsibilities in midfield that you have to do. There's a lot of different roles now coming into different positions, and that really extends as well to the keeper. The keeper has to be able to stop shots, but they also have to be able to create opportunities going forward as well. And that extends over to Manchester United as well. With the transfer of Onana coming in, uh, replacing David De Gea. David De Gea, if I remember right, winning the Golden Glove last season. Uh, but still going anyway because of his lack of distribution, his inability to play a really good ball forward. To uh, And you can see it with Onana. He can really play that long ball. He can really get past a lot of players, create attacking opportunities. But could just distribute the ball very well also. What Onana seems to be very good at at the moment as well is letting goals in, which is probably <laughs> not a very good thing. And it's probably why he's got a lot of criticism at the moment. But he, Onana, is still very good at doing that. And there's evidence that into Milan before, playing the Champions League as well. In the final against Man City, Pep Guardiola, you know, jokingly said that he's almost like a holding midfielder, the amount that Onana steps forward and gets involved with the build-up of play. So in that case, it seems to be that Ten Hag wants that in his team also. It hasn't really come to fruition massively yet, but that is obviously the plan going forward. And that's the funny thing with keepers these days, because I think to a certain extent, it's still a bit of a 50-50 divide as to what people want in a keeper. For example, with Onana, he was booted out of his international team uh, because of the fact that he was almost crazy. I believe the manager's words were or the risk taking that he took is probably the word that I'm looking for. He took a lot of risks. And really what people want in a keeper these days, those top managers anyway, in those top teams, they want keepers that are going to take risks. And they want players also that are going to just take risks going forward because that's how the game is going, taking risks going forward without sacrificing too much at the back to have the ability to do both. Everybody wants that player these days, both in outfield and in goal as well. You really see it in how top teams play at the moment. Take Brighton, for example. Take Man City, for example. The way they build up play from the back, they almost use their keepers like a centre-half sometimes uh, to distribute that ball, to create an overload of players going forward. And then, yeah, if anything goes wrong, it goes wrong. But if a keeper is good with their feet, they're going to be reliable to switch the course of play across the pitch 
uh, and create opportunities going forward without making too many mistakes. And that's really changing football in a lot of ways in how goalkeepers are developed for the future. I think take Ajax, for example, the development within the academies, the keepers now are all being developed in a way of being able to keep hold the ball to play almost like an outfield player. No coincidence that Onana's also come from that club also. Apparently having such a different technique with how he stops shots that they actually looked into how he stops shots and found that making saves the way that he does it, he does it better than anybody else because of his unique technique and now they provide that as an option for the younger keepers also. The game is changing a lot with regards to keepers, both in the priority of a keeper stopping shots, but also in the priority of keepers being able to distribute the ball, keep the ball, everything like that. So really my conclusion is that keepers aren't really keepers anymore in the traditional way that they used to be. Not in how they are judging their ability and how they can be switched and swapped between each other and they're not being a definitive number one, but also in the way that they play almost like an outfield player as well. It's a lot of change. It's really interesting. And you can see for those top teams, it really does uh, bring a tactical advantage. Even if you can't see that really in Manchester United at the moment, uh, hopefully Onana can grow into that position and actually, you know, do something with it. So yeah, what do you think about this change in goalkeepers? With the case of Arteta and Arsenal, it seems to be a good development that they're making. In the case of Manchester United, it seems to be almost a priority of having good distribution and sacrificing that ability to stop shots. But that just seems to be the case at the moment. You don't know what the future is going to be whether this is going to be the big new future of goalkeeping that they're going to be almost like these outfield players or maybe it's this big experiment at the moment that is just going to fall flat on its face and keepers are going to go back to stick it on the line making saves and doing the basic stuff thank you for watching and listening as always and i'll see you again at some point whenever i have the time to make these